Gaza, and many other countries on that side of the world. I think the, the, the point is that the hate is so large. The hate is something that starts from sometimes above and works its way down to the root. What does that mean? There are videos that have surfaced with kids that are eight years old being taught to hate Jews. How can you possibly have a peaceful environment when you're raising hate from the beginning? Same thing happens with the KKK. If you raise a kid to hate people of color, that's all he knows. It's like teaching somebody the alphabets. We're in a very sad place. The evil of the world is showing their face. And I'm not going to mention names, but I feel when people see a high-profile person with a lot of hate against one, two, three, four, five, they say, it's okay to rear our head now because the leader is hating. Mm -hmm. That's the problem. Yeah, and so it becomes a matter of the heart and what you're being taught. Uh, my mother used to always say that uh, prejudice is something taught, and it's something exactly. that you have to learn. If you keep feeding it, it will grow. Look, you grew up in, in, uh, in New York City, in Brooklyn, and uh, you grew up with uh, a multiplicity of different people from different backgrounds. They were Jewish, they were Islamic, they were Christians, they were Latino, they were black, they were white. You know, they were from every corner of the globe, and you, you were able to work side by side with them. Uh, have we lost that, and, and can we get it back? That's a very good question, Kelly. You know, let me let me go back in time. I was raised, as you said, around, I was in a business called the Shmanta business. The Shmanta business is a Jewish industry of the garment industry. And then I was raised by Palestinian people in restaurants. They showed me love. They appreciated me, they supported me, they respected me, I respected them. My mother, like your mother, Kelly, said, you know, there's good and bad in all people. And that's what I live my life with, that's what I tell my kids. There's good and bad in all people. I do not associate with bad people. If a person says, I hate blacks, then you hate me. If a person says, I hate whites, then you hate me. If a person says, I hate Jews, then you hate me. If a person says, I hate Palestinians, then you hate me. We need to go to the grassroots of love for humanity. I can't talk to people. The demonstration created a public issue for all traffic in the area, leaving dozens of drivers stranded. In Los Angeles, a large group of Palestinian protesters marched towards the federal building, demanding an end to what they called genocide against Palestinians in Gaza. At least one protester was spotted spraying graffiti at a national cemetery. Organizers say they'll continue to shut down the streets of L.A. until demands are met. And here in Atlanta, it's hundreds getting out of hand. Of gathered near Grant Park tonight to demand a ceasefire in the growing conflict. News Edge reporter Joy Dukes was there. Yeah, that free Palestine protest taking place here at Grant Park Sunday evening where hundreds of people showed up to show their opposition to U.S. support of Israeli military forces. We won't stop to Tensions between Israel and Palestine continue to boil over in the Gaza Strip. Peace cannot exist as long as Israel is occupying Palestinians' land. Even the bitter cold of a Sunday in January wasn't enough to silence the voices of Atlanta residents in support of Palestine. As, as a black male, there's serious um, familiarity with oppressive states. Um, and the reality is uh, all have an equal responsibility to make sure we're doing our part. On Sunday, a few hundred people 
Marched the a bunch of terrorists. They are. We're demanding that the U.S. end all aid to Israel. Clap says the protest was part of an international call to action to end, end all aid. Aid to past the 90-day mark. The fact that people are still Iran. Three months into this, in the cold weather. Then you end the terrorist the organizations. The latest of Israeli attacks left nine Palestinians dead, including a young child Sunday. An Israeli officer and Jerusalem resident were also killed. Atlanta resident Marvin Francois says he wants to see the conflict come to an immediate resolution. The most concerning part about it for me is that we have government officials that are using our dollars to advance policies and decisions that we don't support. With the number of Palestinian casualties approaching 23,000, but yet and other it's in billions of dollars to Iran. To the use of U.S. tax dollars to support Israeli armed forces. Some polls indicate the number of Americans in support of a ceasefire is growing. The tens of thousands, the hundreds of thousands of people across the country who are marching on a weekly basis are showing that they do not support the current policies, no matter what the administration says. We don't Our support terrorism. To rally again at the state capitol Monday morning at 10, where Georgia lawmakers are set to reconvene for the start of the legislative session. They say their goal. This issue extends to state-owned enterprises, including the military. Many of my comrades who are currently serving in the military, or were part of it, are experiencing a lack of subsidies. Those entitled to subsidies haven't received them for up to six months. China is home to the world's largest standing military, followed by Not India and the military. The report shows China already had two million active soldiers as of 2022. Turning our attention to Beijing's financial sector, a major Chinese wealth managing firm has declared bankruptcy. This after the company found itself trapped under mounting liabilities driven by a debt-laden property crisis. On Friday, Zhongzhi Enterprise Group, or ZEG, filed bankruptcy with a court in Beijing, saying that it can't afford to pay its obligations. The company first sounded the alarm back in August when it missed a string of payments to investors. What's more, later in November, EMG announced that its liabilities had far outpaced its assets. ZEG was a major player in China's shadow banking system. This trillion-dollar sector stores and manages funds like a regular bank, but offers much higher return for investors. In China, wealth management makes up roughly the size of the entire French economy, and the nation's real estate market depends heavily on it. One of ZEG's most notable recipients, debt-laden Chinese housing giant Evergrande Group, the developer was once considered a real estate empire until it popped China's housing bubble with a large sum of borrowed money. Back in the U.S., a lawmaker is calling out a string of transnational repression taking root in the U.S. Why should the U.S. be concerned about the Chinese Communist Party's influence on American soil? NTD's Steve Lance sat down with Florida Congressman and Army veteran Corey Mills. He told us what he wants his colleagues and Americans to know about China. Congressman Mike Gallagher is heading up the committee, uh, select committee on the Chinese Communist Party. There's a lot of things coming out of that select committee, one of which most recently was uh, China's transnational repression on U.S. soil. How concerned are you about the CCP's growing influence in our country? Well, I think that we have to acknowledge two things. Economics are our greatest outside of our border domestic issue, and China they're our greatest existential threat from an international perspective. The China, Russia, Iran, North Korea geopolitical alignment is something that every American needs to be concerned with. Their advancement of BRICS, the Brazil, Russia, uh, India, China, and South Africa geopolitical alignment that's expanding out. We need to think about the Belt and Road Initiative expansion, which looked at the Eurasian expansion, the control of Africa and Oceania to cut off Western Hemisphere supply chain. Their goal with Russia and China, why they modified their constitution, isn't just their tyrannical authoritarian and dictatorship style ruling. It's about eliminating the U.S. dollar as a global currency. That's why they utilize their, you know, marriage of convenience with Russia for the Chavez of Venezuela, with Pedro and Colombia. The economic coercion that they've thrown into Honduras and Panama to control the tariffs, taxation, and passage through the Panama Canal. The idea that they're now ingratiating themselves more in the Western Hemisphere, and they're actually responsible for all the chemical precursors and the things that are being printed, the fentanyl, that's coming across our borders. 
They are on a multi-pronged front. They're at an economic resource cyber-based warfare against America. We need to be looking at elimination of double taxation on Taiwan. We need to be looking at the ideas of decoupling away from adversarial nations. And they're not a competitor. They're an adversary. So getting away from China, taking control of our supply chain, taking control of our actual ability in the industrial base, stopping the idea of continuing to export to countries that are looking to destroy us. And the problem is that when you've got people like Joe Biden who are so corrupt, so inept and feckless, who are so weak on China, weakness invites aggression. And that's why you're seeing this emboldened approach by China to advance their problems in, you know, their support of Iran, who is backing Hamas, their support of Russia, who is invading Ukraine. They want to drag us into these endless wars because they know economically it is a really disadvantage for the American people. But also, it's great for them because we buy a lot of our actual raw material goods. They control 15 of 16 rare mineral mines. So we need to wake up and understand China is not a competitor, they're not an ally, they're an adversary, and we need to be decoupling away. Congressman Corey Mills, thank you so much. America First Legal has received new records. The foundation says the records suggest the president's son leveraged his involvement. Hunter Biden allegedly influenced his father's meetings and calendar for his own personal gain. For example, when then Vice President Biden allegedly agreed to give a keynote speech at an event, the event was hosted by an organization whose board included his son. Hunter Biden allegedly lobbied his father to have to have him accept the invitation. Now, some House Democrats are accusing former President Trump of improperly profiting from his presidency as well. The Trump Organization denied wrongdoing. Democrats on the House Oversight Committee published a report on Thursday. They assert that Trump's businesses took in at least an estimated $7.8 million from 20 foreign governments during his term in violation of the Constitution. The outline payments mostly included spending on rent at the Trump Tower and Trump World Tower, both in New York. They also included stays at the Trump International Hotels in Washington, D.C. and Las Vegas. The report also alleged that Trump allowed those payments to influence his foreign policy moves. A Trump Organization spokesperson told the Epic Times, quote, that narrative is insane. The spokesperson noted that the Trump Organization can't prevent people from making reservations through third-party booking websites. And former President Trump is reportedly set to appear in court again in the federal election case against him. The court is probing whether Trump can be prosecuted in the case or not. The election interference trial is scheduled to start in March. However, the court is still dealing with the question whether Trump can even be prosecuted for the allegations against him. Special counsel Jack Smith alleges Trump tried to illegally overturn the 2020 election. Lawyers for the former president, however, say Trump was still in office at the time and thus enjoys presidential immunity. They also point out that he was not impeached and convicted by Congress. NBC reports the court is set to hear those arguments on Tuesday with Trump attending in person. Former first son Eric Trump was in Iowa yesterday at a MAGA campaign event in support of his dad. The younger Trump emphasized what he sees as the accomplishments of his father's administration. He cited the low employment across racial and gender lines and celebrated what he called the largest tax cuts in U.S. history. He also said there was peace in the Middle East under former President Trump and that his father fought for health and religious freedom. Eric Trump then got his dad on the phone, seeming to please those independents. Say hi to the entire crowd. Well, I just want to thank everybody for being so loyal and being so wonderful. And always remember, we got the farmers of Iowa, $28 billion. That's a lot of money. And I can't think about Joe Biden doing that. He wouldn't even think about it. So I just want to say I, I look forward to seeing you on Friday. We love you all. And I hope my son is doing a great job because he always has done a good job. how they carry themselves. Let me take out what they look like. Let's talk about how they act. Hate. Material of hate. Emails of hate. That's the person we need to watch. How do we do that? Look, this is not a day of leaving your doors open anymore. You don't leave your doors open. You lock your doors. I live in the fourth safest community in the whole country. Where I live, I'm not to tell you where I live, but I, where I live is the fourth safest community in the whole country. I got three locks on my door. 
the front, bottom, the top, and the middle. Three locks. Then I got a Rottweiler inside that will take care of business. Now, if you get past my Rottweiler, I'm going to be doing a Tony Montana thing. Let me introduce you to my new friend. Okay? That's the reality of it. I'm prepared. We all need to be prepared. We all need to keep your doors locked. Check where you park. Look at your surroundings. If you're only going to spend $100, don't take $300. Christmas is coming. Keep your gifts in a locked area of the trunk. Don't leave your gifts in the bank so people can look in and steal it. It could be a McDonald's bag empty. People notice sometimes people put cash in McDonald's bags. It's true. Make sure your car is clear. Keep your car clear. And most important, most important, no. Even though you may think he's not around, my friend upstairs, he's always around. May explode into a broader conflict. Israel trading heavy gunfire with Hezbollah, a militant group out of Lebanon. Hezbollah says their Saturday attack is in response to the killing of a top Hamas leader in Lebanon last week. Hezbollah leaders claim they launched 62 rockets towards Israel surveillance base party is calling on Turkey to cut ties with NATO. The group's party leader says all of the attacks in Iraq, Iran, Libya, as well as in Palestine are perpetuated by America. Back in the U.S., the Supreme Court justices are allowing the state of Idaho to enforce its abortion ban even in cases of medical emergencies, at least for now. The justice they will hear arguments on both sides in April. The case in Idaho is the Supreme Court's second major abortion dispute since overturning Roe v. Wade, which allows states to severely restrict or ban abortions. The court is also hearing a challenge to the Food and Drug Administration's rules for with a Pristone, a drug commonly used for medicated abortion, following a minor elective medical procedure. But it's the Defense Department's first acknowledgement that he had been admitted five days earlier to Walter Reed National Military Medical Center. Air Force Major General Pat Ryder said Friday that it was not clear when Austin would be released from the hospital, but said the secretary was, quote, recovering well. Now, the Pentagon's failure to disclose Austin's hospitalization is counter to normal practice with the president and other senior U.S. officials and cabinet members. The Pentagon Press Association, which represents media members who cover the Defense Department, sent a letter of protest to Ryder and Chris Meager, the Assistant Defense Secretary for Public Affairs. Rory, it comes as Israel continues its efforts to destroy terrorist targets in Gaza and rescue the remaining hostages captured by Hamas. New on the front lines today after they report coverage it comes as Secretary of State Antony Blinken is set to visit the region in hopes to find some sort of peaceful resolution. That was real since other and demand more what are you doing? I uh I mean we are looking for that uh, to try to defuse of that challenge mention prime minister who says there will be no to the war until hamas is dismantled such as home to no wreck to is god so the fish how they carry themselves let me take out what they look like let's talk about how they act hate material of hate emails of hate that's the person we need to watch how do we do that look this is not a day of leaving your doors open anymore you don't leave your doors open you lock your doors i live in the fourth safest community in the whole country where I live, I'm not to tell you where I live, but I, where I live is the fourth safest community in the whole country. I got three locks on my door, the front, bottom, the top, and the middle, three locks. Then I got a Rottweiler inside that will take care of business. 
Now, if you get past my Rottweiler, I'm going to be doing a Tony Montana thing. Let me introduce you to my new friend. Okay? That's the reality of it. I'm prepared. We all need to be prepared. We all need to keep your doors locked. Check where you park. Look at your surroundings. If you're only going to spend $100, don't take $300. Christmas is coming. Keep your gifts in a locked area of the trunk. Don't leave your gifts in the bank so people can look in and steal it. It could be a McDonald's bag empty. People notice sometimes people put cash in McDonald's bags. It's true. Make sure your car's clear. Keep your car clear. And most important, most important, no. Even though you may think he's not around, my friend upstairs, he's always around. A valid asylum claim. You can go to one of those ports of entries, of which we have 29 just in the state of Texas alone. You must um, the, the oh, say go. Tomorrow, Secretary Mayorkas will make another trip to the city of Eagle Pass, where he'll meet with federal agents and tour some of the facilities along the southern border. Still ahead, members of one metro... I gotta say this. You may think you have gotten over on somebody by robbing them or stealing from them. He knows. When it happens to your mother, when she goes to the store and she goes shopping and somebody robs her, and you've been robbing people your whole life, that's why it happened. What goes around comes around. That's old school, Kelly. Yeah. yeah. It's true. It exists. I'm I'm talking to Luis Perry. He's president of Kadima Security. We're going to take a slight break, and when we come back, we will go over his book, Failure is Not an Option. That's coming up next.